good morning. Welcome to Why in the Morning. And if it's Tuesday, it's all matters pertaining entrepreneurship Tuesday. My name is Michelle Ashira. You can find me across all my social media handles. That is at Michelle Ashira. You can also follow us across all our social. That is at Y254 channel. In this session, we dive into an, uh, we dive into an interview, an interesting interview that looks at a small space farming. Uh, in studio, I'm joined with Masi Munena. She is the founder and CEO of Shamba Connect. So she'll be taking us through what it entails when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is the word? The vegetable gardening and also commercial rabbit farming. So it's an incorporation of a little bit of everything. Good morning, Masi. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How is your morning uh, starting off? How are you feeling? A what are your morning. energy levels looking like? <laughs> I'm excited. I'm happy to be here. Uh -huh. I'm excited about the things that are happening mm -hmm. in the in the business and also in the in the country at the, uh, at the moment. You you yeah. are country. <laughs> 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 would you would you mind to share? <laughs> I think for me, uh -huh. uh, I look at every day as something new that comes, something a, a special, something oh. for us. Oh. So for me, it's something new. So you, you're intentional <laughs> like that in your life? <laughs> yes, yes. Right. I am intentional. Because every day is a gift. Mm -hmm. Every single morning is a gift. Yeah. All right. That's beautiful. That's positivity all the way. We need that <laughs> energy We everywhere. need that, especially as entrepreneurs. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, starting us off, uh, tell us who Masi um, Amonene, uh, who is she? Uh, where did the love or, you know, the passion brew from when it comes to a professional vegetable gardener? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the <laughs> name. <laughs> okay, guys, behind the scene, before we started this conversation, uh, Masi was like, ah, that's actually a new title we can add somewhere in the CV. But <laughs> <laughs> yes. So where did that love, uh, passion brew from? For me, it started at a young age. I used to have issues with my stomach especially when it comes to vegetables and, mm -hmm. you know, being able to digest vegetables and all these things. So I, I struggled a lot because my blood levels were low and at the same time I could not handle vegetables. So I tried to figure out what could have been the issue, what was making me not be able to, to digest vegetables or to handle them. Mm -hmm. And along the way, <coughs> I found that the reason was the pesticides and the chemicals that we use in making of these vegetables and growing them because you can tell the difference in taste between the ones that have been grown with chemicals and pesticides and all these things versus the ones that have been grown organically. Okay. So for me, it started a movement. I want everyone to start growing their own vegetables because eventually the solution to the food crisis that you are having now and will continue to have is us being able to utilize the resources that we have to create uh, vegetable and um, gardens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, why? So it grew from you having acidity issues. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And it took, you know, some of uh, some of us out here, if even if you're going through that situation, we will not be in a position to be like, what is the real problem? Let yeah. me now find out and actually uh, just uh, you know create a solution, come up with a solution to bridge that gap. What pushed you to do that? I had been in hospitals, <coughs> in and out of hospitals. So this month I'm okay because I'm on medication. Next month I'm, I'm down again. My blood levels are low. I'm not able, and all, all the time the doctors would tell me you have to keep taking vegetables to increase your blood levels. So it was like, uh, you know, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. Uh, one step forward, two steps back. So I decided to find out what could be the issue, what is happening behind all this? What could be the reason? Mm -hmm. And for me, I found out that if I'm able to consume these vegetables, they're actually going to give me a solution to my problem. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what is the <coughs> difference between uh, when it comes to vegetables that are grown from uh, the chemicals that you're mentioning, um, pesticides, and mm -hmm. just organically? How different are you, as Shamba Connect, how different are you doing it? For us, we ensure that when we are uh, installing a garden for you, we take you through the process. We train you on how to ensure that your garden's remain organic mm -hmm. from how we the kind of uh, manure that we use to the kind of fertilizers I mean to the kind of pesticides that you're going to use which are not 
um, chemicals. Okay, yeah. all right. So uh, when was uh, Shamba Connect? When it did when did it all began? Take us through that particular journey. Yeah. Um, I used to be an employee somewhere. Uh -huh. <laughs> it used to be a side hustle. Uh -huh. It's just one of those things that um, as I start, as I realized that if I could create a solution for myself, I could be able to do it for many other people. I started doing that for myself and now for friends and family. And I realized that this could actually be something that could sustain me. And along the way, I was happy to realize that was, it was not only sustaining me, but to, to a few other people here and there. Uh -huh. Because I, I could not do it all by myself. Okay. It's, it's, it's very manual. <laughs> it's intense. Uh -huh. all <laughs> yes. right. uh, take me through um, your mental space whereby you made that decision that actually this can be uh, something that I can be into <laughs> full time because starting, uh, when it all started, it was a side hustle. Yes. So take me through the first project or the first project that you did and the mental space that shifted everything and you saw this as something you can do full time. I always believe the first customer should be me. Okay. So when I did that and it worked for me and I could see my budget in terms of my expenditures in the in the in the garden mm -hmm. and versus now what I used to spend in the market mm -hmm. and I I could see that I'm actually saving a lot by using my own vegetables instead of and buying yes, the vegetables. I didn't have to buy any land anywhere. Mm -hmm. It was just within my space. Mm -hmm. I realized this could be a solution to so many other people looking to save money mm -hmm. and looking to look for, I mean, looking for other avenues to raise money. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was an exciting journey. When I did my first project, it was, it was exciting. You know, when you get that first customer, the excitement of I have to show up and, you know, do everything right and mm -hmm. show that everything and deliver. is well. Yes. <laughs> And of course, along the way, I have been able to learn because I also failed quite a few times. Mm -hmm. You could do something and then it fails and you go back and ask yourself, why did this not work out? And I mean, we have been getting better and better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we even get into the failing stories, because that's what makes us, we do better through those particular stories. Mm -hmm. I'd like to find out how did you fund your, uh, your business in terms of... Uh, just accessibility on finances how did you go about it because it's one thing yes, you know just uh, uh, doing it for <coughs> you as you know as your as your first clientele and you believe in yourself and the project but now it gets to the point whereby you, you have mm. the picture of a business right so how do you go about funding your business how did you go about funding your business yeah employment is not bad mm -hmm. <laughs> employment is good mm -hmm. because it gives you the base on which you can be able to do your other things other than the stability of a salary, which is really good. Mm -hmm. um, you find that there are many other things that you can be able to do with the same salary. What else can you do? And that is one of the things that young people need to be trained on. When you're employed, you know, many of the people get into work with the excitement of, oh, I'm looking forward to the, la the last day of the month or the payday mm -hmm. so that I can go out and drink and, you know, entertain yourself and do all these other things. <laughs> <laughs> but the truth is, if we live for today yes. and we have no, no results for tomorrow, mm -hmm. then we are shooting ourselves in the foot. Because the truth is, we have seen the last two years, employment is something good. However, when the, when the economy is going down and you find that what you used to hang on so hardly, so tightly to, mm -hmm. you find that they are also going through their own seasons. Oh, yes. And COVID-19 yes. time frame oh, proved that It to proved us. that. Mm -hmm. I think employers also realize we don't need all these people mm -hmm. to deliver the same results. Mm -hmm. We don't need to use all these offices. They also, everyone is looking for ways to reduce their expenses and increase their revenues. And so how can we do that? And that is where, for mm -hmm. me, it has been a journey. Mm -hmm. All right. So here you are. You started. Uh, take me through the first project. How was the feeling? Where were you at mentally? You know, excited. I want to deliver, and the uh, the response from the client. I had bought the raw materials, mm -hmm. and I waited. I advertised. Mm -hmm. I told people, and you know, friends, family, everyone. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, like like we all are, we don't to take we don't to take a risk mm -hmm. when someone is starting off. Mm -hmm. We just want to first sit on the side, and see how it goes before we can buy into it, and. Well, that is what happened for me also. Mm -hmm. I waited for some time. Mm -hmm. When I got my first project, I was anxious. 
Mm-hmm. I was anxious. I couldn't sleep that night because I was thinking, now this is something I'm doing for myself mm-hmm. and I have to really prove that I can be able to deliver. Mm-hmm. And so I ensured that I put everything together, um, ensured that everything went perfectly well. However, I mean, with all this planning, there are these things that still come up, the setbacks and all that, the things that you didn't even foresee. All oh, right. Yeah, so I'll leave, it as, I'll leave it at Marcy. We'll be right back, guys, back at home. Uh, we're having a commercial break, so we'll be right back. And Marcy will be taking us to her journey. If, did she, was, was she able to actually acquire more clientele? And how did she go about that? So make sure you stay tuned. So much coming your way on this particular conversation. We're looking at small space farming. So we're having a commercial break. We'll be right back. Welcome, welcome back to Why in the Morning on your number one youth station. That is a Y254 channel. And if it's Tuesday, the hashtag to use is hashtag Entrepreneurship Tuesday. So today we are looking at small space farming. And in studio, I'm joined with Masi Munene. She is the founder and CEO of Shamba Connect. So Masi, before we went for a commercial break, uh, I would like us to, we were touching on uh, your transition from uh, employment to now you being self-employed uh, in this sole proprietorship. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ah, hey, now let me tell you, everyone who is watching this conversation and uh, they have the dream or they're still, you know, juggling employment and a side hustle, they have that fear, right? When you're in employment, you are assured that there's a check at the end of the month it's true. and you're <laughs> sure that you'll take care of your bills yes but now covid happened there's a time covid happened the, that time frame that actually proved us wrong that you can wake up the following morning and you don't you have lost your job yes so true. how did you s take that step of faith and where were you at your mental space just overcoming the fear of moving from certainty to an uncertain space in your life let me start by saying, first of all, that uh, a side hustle and an eight to five, mm -hmm. juggling the two is something good. However, mm -hmm. don't blame why your side hustle is not giving you enough if you're only giving it between 5 p.m. and is it 8 p.m. or 10 p.m. Because that is the, um, the much you have invested into it. Because with your eight to five, you have invested your 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and sometimes even beyond 5 p.m. So one of the things that where our fear is based on is that your side hustle is not giving you enough. Mm -hmm. And if you put, if you wait until everything comes together for you to step out, it will never happen because your side hustle works between 5 p.m. when you're tired to whatever time. Some people work overnight. And that is the time when you're ex extremely exhausted. So don't expect it to give you as much returns as your 8 to 5 yeah, that is one of the reasons why we w one of the reasons why we are f we are afraid to step out. Mm -hmm. But also, I think having the big picture in mind, having a vision of where you want to go, because the truth is, we don't have forever to live. We have this one life. It's true, we live only once. But we also have to look at uh, what else can we do with our lives. There's so much that has been invested in us. When even when you look at the Bible. We have been invested with talents, things to, to do with ourselves, and yet we just want to have the comfort of employment, of just going to do the bare minimum, and also expecting the bare minimum, and just moving from month to month to month to month. There will come a time when that energy that you could be able to invest right now will not be there. You might have the money, but not the energy. Mm -hmm. So for me, it has been a journey. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. self-discovery. Self-discovery. Which is absolutely good. Masi, uh, you'll also agree with me. Uh, uh, and also people who have already done it, people yeah. who have already taken that step of faith, and they've gotten into something they love, they've started something, but they're on the starting stage now. <laughs> Did you get to a place where you were looking back? You understand? Because <laughs> gardening takes patience. Any business yes. takes patience yes. when you're starting out. Did you get to a place where now you're looking back? Did I make the right decision? Now you're you know, second guessing yourself. And how did you deal with that? I did. I would be lying to say that I did not. Many times I did. In fact, you'd wake, I would wake up in the morning and wonder, okay, what am I going to do today? <laughs> then I think about my colleague that I left, who's probably earning that, you know, that amount of money that mm -hmm. I am no longer earning mm -hmm. to be where I am. So to, the truth is I, I thought... I looked back 
I ask myself, did I really make the right decision? But now for me, the bigger picture is what I had in mind, mm -hmm. the flexibility of time. And now I'm a family person. I have young children. I want to bring them up. I want to be there for them. And this is the, the age where they need me the most. And that is what I think I was struggling with mm -hmm. in the area of employment. Mm -hmm. Because employment would take up the whole day. Mm -hmm. By the time I would get home, I would be all tired. They would also be tired. So I find that I'm really asking myself hard questions. Am I really the one raising these children? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, take me through how do you how did you build your client base or or even because you're still in or you know building the network. How do you go about it? Um, one thing I have learned is that personal development is the greatest development you'll ever do for your business mm -hmm. because if you do not invest in yourself, you will find you have nothing to offer. Mm -hmm. You find that. You're constantly struggling with your competitors because they always have something ahead of, of, ahead of you. But you're not taking the time to invest in yourself and grow yourself. Because if you do not grow yourself, don't expect your business to grow. Mm -hmm. They say that your, your business will grow as far as you can grow. Theref therefore, that means if you're not growing yourself, your business will never go ahead of you. Mm. So for me, I have prioritized personal development. If there is anywhere I can learn something about business, mm -hmm. I am available. Okay. I am ready. You I am there. willing. <laughs> I am there. <laughs> so personal <laughs> development, you attending, uh, uh, I would like to assume, uh, business seminars, changes, yes, just yes. to uh, build on your development. Other, other ways do you, how, other ways, what are the other ways that you build the capacity? The other ways are... Um, hanging out with business people like myself. Mm -hmm. When I started off, I really struggled with every single thing. Uh, first of all, because I am a mother also, you know, as you're walking along the I street, you see something nice. It's a full-time job. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's a full-time job, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> when you go along the street and you see something nice and you're thinking, you know, start think you start thinking, because you don't have that the assurance of salary at the end of the month, mm -hmm. now you have to really think hard. Do I really need this? Mm -hmm. That is what is called bootstrapping. You actually go to the basics. <laughs> For people who start from where I started from, mm -hmm. you should be comfortable living with the basics. Mm -hmm. You know, some of us, especially when you're employed, you, you're used to a certain kind of lifestyle. And when you get into business, my mm -hmm. friend, <laughs> mm -hmm. just come down to the basics. Mm -hmm. You come down to the basics. You hang out with people who've been where you are. Mm -hmm. And I think having people guiding me, having a mentor along the way, mm -hmm. has really been... Uh, helpful for me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Who's your mentor? I have a few. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. It would be great to <laughs> to first get their permission before I start. You don't However. want to share your blessings. <laughs> look, at, look at how I will. <laughs> I will. In fact, <laughs> but you don't want to share <laughs> your blessings. <laughs> Next time, I'll be happy to bring to bring him along. I have quite a few, uh -huh. and I'll be very glad to bring them along because they have really worked with me. Mm -hmm. They get into my into the muddy places mm -hmm. and really help me to get out of where I am because um, they have also walked the path and they are willing to help me <laughs> through it. Okay. It's so next time you know it's a date? Uh, yeah. Oh yes. Uh, finally she, she has agreed. Oh, <laughs> so how do you market your business? Uh, first uh, I use referrals. Mm -hmm. I always ensure when I do Ooh. work for someone Mm. I ensure that it goes perfectly well. The funny thing about uh, agribusiness is that it's not, it's not a one-time thing uh, overnight. Mm -hmm. So you wait for you have to be patient. You wait for the work to be done. After that, you have to wait for it to grow and see and you know see the joy that people are having in their homes. Mm -hmm. Finally, involving their children in the things that they do, using your time to actually you know have your free time. Uh, distress, relieve yourself, go through your garden and all that. Now, at that point, someone is happy to refer you. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, referrals have been my greatest uh, source of new clients. Mm -hmm. Other than that, mm -hmm. I, have, I have grown through <laughs> uh, social media. It's something I just grew into, that I'm still growing into. There are many aspects I've not yet reached. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's an area of development for me. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yes. You've mentioned something which is very critical, which is referral. 
referrals are the best uh, when it comes to gaining new clientele, just as you have mentioned. I'd like to understand what is your strategy when it comes to building an, a good customer relation experience? Um, how I look at it is when I go to see a client, I always ensure that I know, I get to understand where this customer is at. Mm -hmm. Sometimes as business people, we go with our minds. We go and say, this is what you need to have, this is what you need to have, this is what you need to do, but you don't understand where this person is coming from. And what they need. Yes, mm -hmm. what they actually need. Mm -hmm. Because I've worked with people who, who are fine. They just want something to, something to hang around with. I can tell you, like, uh, in my rabbit business, there are clients who just come for, for pets. Mm -hmm. So if I go and tell them, I'm going to give you this big breed that is going to grow in the next four months, it'll be something humongous. You can be the main distributor. <laughs> 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 They're thinking, how on earth, how will this thing fit in here, you know? Yeah. And, and even if you sell to them what you think is what, is what they need, you'll be very surprised because what they're probably looking for is something that will stay tiny and small and sweet and lovely and cuddly and Aww. fluffy and all that. I love rabbits. Uh, they, they have different types of colors. There's <laughs> yes. red, there's blue. That's, that's always uh, something that I've never have to, have to grow. It's always interesting. But I don't and like the, 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 farm. <laughs> the smell of... That's still a struggle. Or the smell of the urine? Yeah. Oh, when you, f when you start to see the benefits of it? Oh, well, you <laughs> forgo that. And how to take care of it? You oh, forgo that. These other things that become... That be <laughs> irrelevant. Irrelevant, yes. for sure. So what is the most effective uh, vegetable to grow on a small uh, space? Let's say like a backyard that I have in my... Uh, and I would like to uh, maximize on that particular space. So what would be the most effective veg vegetable to grow? First of all, I get to understand what the client needs. Mm -hmm. For example, you find that there are some clients who like, um, I've worked with people who are like especially medics mm -hmm. and they tell you that there's no juice like celery juice. Mm -hmm. So all I want in my garden is celery. Fill the place with celery from, mm -hmm. you know, from here to the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Therefore, once I understand what the client needs, I'm able now to tell you which works for what you have. In at Chamber Connect, mm -hmm. we design gardens based on the size of your space, okay. your personal style, mm -hmm. and then the budget that you have. Mm -hmm. So based on that, we are able to design a garden that is suitable for you, and also that advises the crops that are best grown there. I've found that spinach is one of the <laughs> vegetables that we cannot do without. Yeah, that was you actually what was going it? behind my uh, right? at the back of my head. <laughs> I was like, spinach will actually do well. Yeah. Yeah, and it's one of the vegetables that are very, uh, quite very loved. Uh, and they can go, for, like you can, they're nutritious, you can go with every meal. Yeah, so, so uh, all the, uh, my mind was at spinach. <laughs> spinach. I <laughs> can <laughs> spinach. <laughs> so we can, yeah, let's look at yeah. some of you, uh, some of the uh, home design, uh, home garden designs that you have worked on. And probably you can take us to those ones as well. So if my director is ready, we can get to have those particular images. Yes, yeah, so do vegetables gardens need full sunlight? Here we go. Um, probably could take us through that. So we have a, uh, I don't know, wh which, which vegetable is that? Oh, <laughs> that's spinach. Oh. <laughs> spinach. Uh, uh, Team spinach. Yeah, yeah spinach. Yeah. Uh, how long does they take? How, do, how long does spinach take to actually develop to this particular, uh, the way they look like right now? Clients keep asking that. You know, <laughs> the, mo <laughs> the moment you plant, they start asking, so when? when so now when? 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 Yeah. when? <laughs> and this takes uh, three to four weeks. I normally advise that you start harvesting at the fourth week uh -huh. because by then uh -huh. the, the plant will have grown enough leaves mm -hmm. to cook. Let me just use the, the layman language uh -huh. to cook enough food for the rest of the plant so that when you, when you harvest two or three leaves, uh -huh. you still have enough uh -huh. for the rest of the season. So even after I harvest, of course, they will uh, you have still to keep, grow. You have to leave some of them to continue cooking food for the rest of the plant. <laughs> Okay, you used the good layman's <laughs> language. Now we are yes. now <laughs> understanding. So <laughs> take us to this <laughs> design. And the vegetable now that one here. depends on uh, someone's space that is made of wood, very mm -hmm. attractive. Actually, that is has, that has been one of um, one of the most attractive um, planters that we have. Mm -hmm. That is popular. Mm -hmm. So there you can plant. Actually, you can actually you can plant either vegetables or mm -hmm. flowers. 
Oh, yeah. Some people love herbs like uh, basil, mm-hmm. sage, oregano, and all, all those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can tomatoes do well as well? They do. They oh, do very well. Okay. But they require lots of water, right? No, actually, we, we take they it through the... They don't require... It depends, on the, it depends on the it depends on the variety uh-huh. because they are the greenhouse ones and the the open field ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Probably we can have another picture, another image. All right. So tomatoes can actually do well in at my, anyone's small backyard. At anyone's small backyard, yes. Uh, so I can have skooma. Oh, you and have also the the traditional uh, yes, uh, uh, vegetables. managu and tere are yeah. very much loved and saga. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I take us to this. There is a young um, man there. Yeah, that is another <laughs> type that we also we also get, uh-huh. and that one has um, we use something else, not the soil, on uh-huh. the on the on the garden itself, uh-huh. and then now we use something to cover it, and it works very well on the rooftops. Ah, uh-huh. so there yes. are vegetables that don't require too much sunlight. Yes, yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, because especially like skooma, uh-huh. you'll find many people complaining that the more they eat, the more acid. Oh the, yeah, uh, you know the 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 more bitter they Be, the become. Bi- yeah, that's true. Sometimes it's because of the conditions that we put them in. Uh-huh. Because again, if we expose them to very harsh conditions, mm-hmm. uh, be sure, and also the breed of skooma that you plant. Uh huh. Yes, it matters. Yeah, it matters. Hmm, the conditions. <laughs> yes. You know, you're They're just like <laughs> human beings. Exactly. That's why <laughs> the mindset wants to like when you come from a harsh. Co- Environment, of course. What do you expect? <laughs> you'll be a <laughs> and person. Yes. Wow. Uh, <laughs> All right. Um, those ones work very well for mm-hmm. partials and balconies and um, even cemented places. Mm-hmm. Are they and flowers? It gives, no, these ones are vegetables. Vegeta- they, are, they are Chinese cabbage, Chinese spinach. Um, you can see there is. Oh, okay. There are some herbs there. Mm-hmm. Yes, that works very well mm-hmm. if you don't have a garden itself, mm-hmm. so we come with the whole kit. Mm-hmm. We call ourselves a plug-and-play company. We just need to be there. Mm-hmm. Yes. So do you also do maintenance for yes, your clients? Yes, we do. We do maintenance for our clients. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Uh, is this Same still... Thing? This finished? is kuma. It's kuma. Yes. Okay. Right. <laughs> and I can tell you this kuma is normally very soft. It's mm-hmm. not like the one that you find in the market. Mm-hmm. This is very soft and it's organic. There's something very beautiful about having, you know, organic, soft vegetables that you can present to anyone, the old people, the children, and they won't have issues with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it takes the same time frame of four weeks to have Yeah, it. four weeks. Okay. All right. This is us at work. <laughs> uh, Maintaining a garden which vegetable somewhere. vegetable is this? That must be spinach. Spinach. <laughs> spinach. You know, I'm <laughs> 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 people back at home, I wonder, I'm sure sp- what's going on. That is spinach. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. You know, let me tell you something about spinach. I can't see <laughs> from afar like that. <laughs> uh, what's that? <coughs> tell me something about spinach. Spinach is very versatile. Uh-huh. We, we use it on salads. We use it on juices. We oh, use yes. it on, on almost every meal. Mm-hmm. For children who are being weaned, mm-hmm. that is the best vegetables because of its softness. Mm-hmm. And it's <coughs> level of iron. Mm-hmm. And what could you not put in a in a vegetable garden? What can she put in a vegetable garden? Um, maybe potatoes. Potatoes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's impossible. <laughs> okay, what is this? This look. Oh, oh, it's the same. It's the same. Maximizing and this on is space a, totally. Yes, this is a self drip kit uh-huh. whereby you don't even. There are people who don't. Uh, who farming is not their their cup of. Uh-huh. Therefore, we give them this that is automated. Uh-huh. It's not automated completely, oh, but right. you don't have to to bend to look for water and all that. Uh-huh. You just water the the orange part, uh-huh. and then it um, drips. It drips. It's like drip irrigation uh-huh. on a kitchen garden. Oh, that is, that is. I've seen that one. In fact, in an office. Ah, but it has no flowers. Ah, yeah. So that's it's nice. Really, really beautiful. Ah, yes. Oh, that's interesting. All right. So we have seen what you cannot do uh, <laughs> in, <laughs> in a vegetable garden is pot- uh, potatoes. 
<laughs> umesema watu was, why are you attacking waru. us? <laughs> umesema waru zetu we cannot plant in our backyard. Actually we have a design for waru also. Uh -huh. they, there are some bags that we use specialized bags uh -huh. that you can be able to at once they are mature uh -huh. you can be able to actually just go and open the bag uh -huh. and pick up the bag <coughs> the potatoes. Uh -huh. But this one would not work on potatoes. Uh -huh. Yes. Take us to uh, what you do as a company when it comes to now you've met a client you found out what they need so how can you get to pick the best site for a new garden? No, um, the first thing that we do after the initial call and understanding what the client needs, mm -hmm. we do a site visit. Mm -hmm. um, once we do a site visit, we are able to ascertain which is the best site to install a kitchen garden. Mm -hmm. And this would be based on you know the, the direction of the wind, the amount of sunlight the space would be able to contain, um, maybe access to water, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And some people also have pets that they want to ensure they don't get to the gardens mm -hmm. because also pets are very, <laughs> they're also lovers of plants. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, le let's move, shift, let's shift gears uh, a little bit and look at rabbit farming and also on a commercial space. So how do you go about that? What does that entail? No, first of all, um, uh, rabbit farming can also be brought down to the level of a kitchen um, uh, small space farming okay. whereby you can actually we put together a kitchen a, a kitchen garden mm -hmm. and a and a rabbit farm on mm -hmm. the side mm -hmm. so they are able to work together mm -hmm. and the reason i say that is that you find that even the meat that we are consuming in the city sometimes is polluted sometimes we don't know mm -hmm. what kind of um medications have been put on the animals and so we we, we are living <laughs> at a different time where we also have to be careful on what we put in our, on the table for our families and for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so I found that uh, with rabbit keeping, and if you, f if you look at Kenya and other countries, rabbit keeping is one of the ways that you're able to get your meat, white meat, in the comfort of your place. Mm -hmm. They don't make noise. Mm -hmm. The smelly bit can be managed because I know Please, <laughs> you I mentioned that there. about... <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was heading. And actually we use this. We, we, we use everything from the rabbit uh -huh. to maintain the garden mm -hmm. and also get food on the table. Oh, yeah. So when you look at uh, how much disposable income that ho households are having right now, mm -hmm. you find that it has gone down because the cost of food has gone up. The cost of fuel has gone up, which has affected everything else. So what's, uh, what I always do when I train people, because I also train um, groups of people on how to ensure that they're able to have a higher disposable income. Mm -hmm. There are two ways. You either increase your level of income mm -hmm. or reduce your expenses. And you find that in this season, many people are living at the bare minimum. You just, you really do something when you really have to do it. So when you're talking about how can we increase our levels of income and rabbit farming comes to mind. Why rabbit farming? Because you find that um, with rabbit farming, they grow very fast. If you ask anyone, they'll tell you they multiply very fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In fact, one of the things that we have to do is control the, the breeding oh, really? to ensure that they don't over multiply and fill the whole space and you don't have... In a time frame of three months? <laughs> you know, um, for rabbit farming, mm -hmm. the, the gestation period is 28 days. 28 days yeah. So you find that if this rabbit, in fact, mm -hmm. if it delivers today and you... Um, it gets access to a male at that time, mm -hmm. it's going to give birth again mm -hmm. the very next month mm -hmm. at the same time okay. with young ones already here. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the things we have to control. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that... Um, but that is a good thing for business. Yes and no. Uh -huh. Because uh, when we are able to control, then we are able to, to assure you of the quality of produce. Mm -hmm. Because what happens to anyone is if... If they are overused, then you find that the quality goes down mm -hmm. in terms of how much weight it has, mm -hmm. the immunity levels mm -hmm. and all that. And so you find that the mother will get tired if it's, if it's served every month mm -hmm. and giving birth every month. Oh, yes. But at a home level, mm -hmm. you find that if someone is able to keep two or three rabbits, mm -hmm. they are able to maintain their household expenses. Mm -hmm. And it's white meat, mm -hmm. very, very, very stomach friendly, mm -hmm. actually very digestible. Mm -hmm. They say that even in the hospitals, when invalids are recovering, that is one of the best white meats to give them. Mm -hmm. When children are reach six months and they need to be, to be weaned, mm -hmm. 
white meat mm -hmm. talk about rabbit meat because it's very sort of easily digestible mm -hmm. and uh, absorbable into the body mm -hmm. yes all right all right i'm still at the maintenance when it comes to the the urine oh of, of the <laughs> we use smell. that for the kitchen gardens mm -hmm. because it's one of the ways of ensuring that you use um you do not use pests to control ah. pesticides to control pests wow okay. <laughs> yes all right. So we use it to add uh, to add nutrients into the soil uh -huh. for the plants, uh -huh. and also to control pests okay. into right. the garden. Uh, take me through when it comes to because when it comes to rabbit farming, you you do it on a commercial level, right? Yes. So how do you gain your clientele? Um, for clientele, same I think same strategy applies in both a yes. area codes. Yes. Right. You find that they buy. They, they are interconnected somehow. Mm -hmm. When you give someone access to fresh organic vegetables, mm -hmm. they'll also find, is there another way then? Is there a way I can also be able to access fresh meat, mm -hmm. organic, and all that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so what is the strategy when it comes to building a strong um, like ownership team? Because when you started off, you, you, you mentioned that it, you cannot do this alone. Yeah, It requires time and teamwork as well. Because we have seen the kind of designs that you people uh, give your client. It's something that requires teamwork. So. I would like to know, to know how do you come up with uh, or rather build a strong ownership team to just have a sustainable business? Oh, on the journey to get to that team, yeah. day one, first of all, when you are alone, you are the CEO, the finance, the accountant, the TIGAL, the secretary, the everything. Mm -hmm. But now over time you realize that you need to grow. Yeah. And you can limit your growth if you want to just do everything. Mm -hmm. But now when you want to grow, you need to get the right people. It's important to get right people because I've also gone through that journey of getting the wrong people. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I do is I ensure that someone has a passion for what they are doing. Mm -hmm. You find that uh, many people come from the farm, from the, from the rural areas, and they come and they say, I do not want anything to do with soil or plants or I want a white collar job. Hey. <laughs> hey. Okay. It's now that people are realizing that food is so important. Yeah. And what our grandmothers used to do uh -huh. is not so bad. It's not. It's not. So how do you identify that someone is really passionate about the, uh, uh, what they want to do or what they have been doing in, in terms of them joining Shamba Connect? Because they have to buy into the brand, right? Yes, they need to buy So how do, you, how do you pick that this person is actually passionate? No, no on CV, they, we, we say we can passionate. work under pr <laughs> pressure. We are passionate. I can do this. So how do you get to actually now see beyond all that and actually pick this person is actually has already brought in bought in on the on the brand? It's also a journey because on day one you may not be able to understand everything that goes in. I'm sure even even when you go to an interview in a job, mm -hmm. you just know the basics. But once you get into it, mm -hmm. you get to see, oh, this is how we do this. Mm -hmm. This is how we relate to clients. This is how we handle clients. This is how we deliver. This is this is our all that. So you find that at the point of interview, I'm able to find out as a HR. Let me tell you, in business, <laughs> you become all these things. You wear one. every hat. You wear all hats available, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so you are able to see. You are able to pick out mm -hmm. this person is is fine, mm -hmm. and they are talented, and they have the 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 passion for giving people solutions mm -hmm. in this area mm -hmm. and i'm happy that i have a really good team um they also help me they really help me because if they don't if i do not if they don't i, I cannot shine without them mm -hmm. helping me mm -hmm. yeah all right what does the bigger picture look like for shamba connect for shamba connect um i'm looking at every household being able to own their own food um, on organic food mm -hmm. and while people are complaining out here there's no food you know you cannot be assured of the kind of food you're getting where it's coming from I'm looking at a place where we are able to sustain ourselves as a country mm -hmm. and so we are in a place where we do not need to get um, support all the time on everything some of these things you can be able to get solutions for ourselves I'm looking at young people leaving employment and getting into solutions for mm -hmm. other people. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things you find that uh, really help the economy is when you are able to open a business and employ other people, mm -hmm. give people a place to live, mm -hmm. give people a solution. And when the country is healthy, every family is able to get their own food. People are employed. I think 
it will be a good place to be in. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited about um, mm. where where we are headed. <laughs> All right. So um, looking back, um, you deciding to make that transition and standing on your own and starting Shamba Connect. Looking back, do you have any regrets? My only regret is I wish I had overcome the fear earlier. <laughs> Why do we ever say that? No, it's true. It's true because... <laughs> Why do we ever say that? I wish I started earlier. Yeah, you know, <laughs> before you leave, you have all these fears of, so what will happen tomorrow? So yeah. if I don't have food? So if the house is locked? so The bills, everything. Yes. Uh -huh. And sometimes you don't look at the possibilities mm -hmm. available to you. Mm -hmm. The amount of um, talents that you have within your hands, mm -hmm. the amount of resources that you have, mm -hmm. that you can actually get solutions for yourself mm -hmm. and for many other people. We don't look at the possibilities. You're always, I think our minds are normally conditioned to the things that cannot happen, mm -hmm. the bad things that would happen, the things that you're going to lose out on. Oh, yeah, that's and true. And we don't look at what you're going to gain. Ah, so we operate on fear, not We hope. operate on fear. Oh. And it's not a good thing. Oh, yes. We need to open our eyes to the possibilities that life has for us out here. Oh, yes. A couple of challenges that you have faced uh, through, through this journey and also something that you are also, a uh, couple of things that you're also working on. I think when it comes to agri agribusiness, mm -hmm. you find that um, it's also capital intensive. Mm -hmm. You find that you're constantly looking for funds to expand. And we are always looking for, is there another, is there a way I can be able to quickly expand and ensure that I reach there? And of course, with the new technologies coming up, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. It also means that I, it's, it's a good challenge that I always have to constantly be on the lookout for what is new, what is in the market, what, how, what can I do better mm -hmm. at a lower cost, at mm -hmm. better yields and all that. Um, also, people, mm -hmm. <laughs> people can be something. Mm -hmm. I think being able to be at that comfortable place where you have the right people doing the right jobs uh, is a good place to be in. Mm -hmm. But it's, I think it's everyone's, every entrepreneur's challenge mm -hmm. to be able to retain the best talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, for someone who's watching uh, this conversation and they would love to be part of what Shamba Connect does, because you also mentioned earlier on that you also do trainings. How can they get to you? Um, you can find us on Facebook. Uh, you can find us on Facebook mm -hmm. as Shamba Connect. Mm -hmm. On Instagram as Shamba Connect. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Any upcoming training that we, we are looking out for? Yes, Any we event? train. We train people on rabbit farming because mm -hmm. that is one of the things that every time we get new clients, they want to know how do we go about it from step one to the eventual step of making this rabbit keeping a business. Mm -hmm. And we have been able to trans, um, to help people come from making it as a home project to being a business. Right. And so we have people who are always looking out for that. And we're also looking to work with organizations that want to get into the, even into the communities. Um, we have been training people in the communities on how to ensure that they always have food. And one of the exciting things for us has been Ma training women on how they can be able to use the skills and the resources that they have mm -hmm. to transform their households from just being a like a, a stay-at-home mother to doing it as business. Mm -hmm. So you find that people are creating employment for themselves and for other people. Fantastic. Yeah. So as we wind up, uh, I would like you to give advice for someone who is in a state of uh, they've already transitioned from employment, mm -hmm. which is which, which is an intentional decision, mm -hmm. as they get into something they love, but now they are stagnant in whatever they uh, they are working on in terms of whatever they love. It could be a business. It could be another uh, space they are into in terms of different industries that they were actually in prior so what would be your advice for someone who is in that position they took uh, a, the step of faith yeah? congratulations <laughs> for taking the step of faith yes and now they're into starting <laughs> some, something of their own but now yes. they feel stagnant and they're looking back one thing i would like to tell you is congratulations first for taking that bold move and secondly personal development is very important and it will help you not only to grow into the space that you 
are looking at, but also it will give you opportunities and uh, possibilities of what else you can be able to do. Then mentorship is very important in what you're doing. Um, look out for people who are already advanced in what you're already doing, and you'll find that people are really helpful. People are willing to help. People are willing to hold your hand, to work with you this journey of entrepreneurship, and they will give you ideas on how you can be able to accelerate, how you can be able to pivot, how you can be able to make it make sense to you. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Perfect. Loved <laughs> that one. Yes. Just keep the faith going and keep ask for going. help and build self-development, right? Yes, yes. Thank you very much, Masi, for creating time to be with us and taking us through a uh, small space farming and what it entails. We appreciate you and you're always welcome as Shamba Connect. Thank you so much, Michelle, for having me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Karibu sana. All right, so that, that is Masi Munene, the founder and CEO of Shamba Connect. We are looking at small space farming and what it entails and how you can go about it. So, right, make sure you keep the conversation going at Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social handles. So keep the conversation going. We'll be right back in a few.